Now that students are able to count electron regions, the next part of this lecture involves bond angles and molecular shape. So remember that Vesper says electrons will try to get as far away from one another as possible while still being tethered to the nucleus. So for an atom with two electron regions, the furthest each electron region can get away is exactly opposite one another on the nucleus. That bond angle is 180 degrees. For an atom with three electron regions, it still maintains a flat structure, and the furthest three electron regions can get away is 120 degrees. Now you might think that therefore four electron regions is 90 degrees, but think three dimensionally. Four electron regions can orient themselves so that they are 109 degrees apart. What we have is two in the plane, and then one coming toward you, and another going back into the screen. So it is a three dimensional structure. Now, one caution as we go into these structures. Please do not confuse electron regions with bonding regions. Electron regions include lone pairs. Bonding regions include single, double, and triple bonds, which are areas of electron density between two atoms. The molecular shapes that we're going to cover are named according to atomic distributions about the central atom. I'll explain further in a moment. The angle is according to the electron's distributions around the central atom. Here is a summary chart that's available in your class resources that students often find very helpful. Please don't worry about the hybridization column just yet. We're not ready. And the electronic geometry, while it's helpful in understanding the electron's orientation, is not the same as the molecular geometry, which is based on atoms and lone pairs. So there are six different shapes that we're going to go over, and these are for atoms that have two, three, and four electron regions and different combinations of atoms and bonds. We'll start with the easiest, carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide has two electron regions, a double bond and a double bond. So that means that the electron clouds are going to orient at 180 degrees from one another. This is the carbon, and these are the two oxygen atoms. The pink is the electron clouds. So we would call that shape linear and that bond angle 180 degrees. What about if we have an atom with three electron regions? This carbon has a single, a single, and a double bond around it. Well, the electron regions are going to be 120 degrees apart. So this blue is the carbon in the middle, and the other atoms are represented around it. The shape we would give this is trigonal planar. I'm sure that you can see if you draw a line from the pink to the green to the red, that is a triangle. This is a planar molecule. So I have this little drawing up here to remind you that it's flat. This nitrogen also has three electron regions around it. It has a lone pair, a single bond, and a double bond. But what's different is that the previous structure had an atom, an atom, and an atom. This one has a lone pair, an atom, and an atom. So that's gonna change the structure slightly. First off, the angle between the chlorine, the nitrogen, and the oxygen is close to 120 degrees, but it's slightly smaller. It might be something like 118 degrees. That's because this lone pair occupies more space than the electrons that are tethered at two ends with a bond. This has the effect of crunching the angle down between the atoms. The shape of this is bent. We call this bent at an angle near 120 degrees. 
The next shape we have has carbon with one, two, three, four electron regions. Each one of these a bond to hydrogen. So four electron regions, I have told you, has a bond angle of 109 degrees. Technically, it's 109.47 with more decimals, but for our purposes, 109 is sufficient. The shape of this is tetrahedral. Perhaps you can see that if I draw in the lines, we are going to make a tetrahedron. Those of you who are fans of Dungeons and Dragons or other board games might recognize the four-sided dice. Here's a better drawing for you, and also a way to discuss the way that tetrahedral shapes are often drawn on paper. Earlier, you saw some shapes with wedges and dashes, and perhaps you were wondering what that meant. Well, as this three-dimensional shape is shown down here, what this means is that the black colored lines are the ones that are in the plane of your screen. The red wedge is coming out toward you. If this could be a three-dimensional presentation, you would see that your screen has a bump here, and the little leg of that carbon-hydrogen bond is coming out toward you. So that would be similar in this structure to the bond shown here. And as you can see, the other bond appears to be going backward. And that's exactly what this dash is. It says that this particular carbon-hydrogen bond is going away from us behind the screen. So that's how chemists often try to show three-dimensional characteristics when drawing on two-dimensional paper. Moving on with molecular shapes. This nitrogen has four electron regions. However, unlike the CH4 or methane, which you saw on the previous slides, this one has three single bonds and a lone pair. That lone pair is going to change the shape slightly. First off, the angle is not precisely 109 degrees between the hydrogen, nitrogen, and hydrogen it is crunched down slightly because the lone pair occupies more space. This shape is not called tetrahedral because we're basing this on the atoms. So it actually has the name trigonal pyramidal. And when I draw in the base, you can see that we've got a triangle base and going upward, it is a pyramid. So it is somewhat like the tetrahedral geometry, but it has an invisible electron cloud here at the top of the pyramid. So this slide is just to remind you that you have two possibilities when you have a central and three atoms. If you have a lone pair on that central atom, we call that trigonal pyramidal and the angle is slightly less than 109. If you have three atoms and no lone pair cloud on that central atom, we call that trigonal planar, and the angle is 120 degrees. This is our last molecular shape. This oxygen has four electron regions, two bonding and two lone pairs. So first, although the bond angle is close to 109 because of the four electron regions, the lone pairs occupy more space than the oxygen-hydrogen bond. So the hydrogen-oxygen-hydrogen -hydrogen bond is crunched down a little bit. It's less than 109 degrees. The shape of this is bent, but this time bent at close to 109, not 120. And that's because we have four electron regions and not three electron regions. So here are what I hope are three compounds that you have already counted electron regions for. This time now, please give the indicated bond angle. So for A, I am requesting the hydrogen sulfur hydrogen bond angle. Certainly, it looks like 180 on this screen, but you know better now. 
and I am also asking for the shape about the central atom. So please consult your notes and come up with an answer. Here are some other hopefully familiar compounds. Again, please count the electron regions and give the indicated bond angle. And here are these same molecules. Kindly come up with the molecular shape. Here's more of a challenge question. In which structures is the bond angle approximate instead of exact? Remember that approximate means that there are lone pairs on the center because that's what causes the angle to deviate from ideal and crunch down. Here is another somewhat tricky question. And I will help you by telling you four is not the answer. While you're thinking about this, remember lone pairs are large and tend to crunch the angles down. 